Hey guys, in this video we're going to be looking at the kidneys and osmoregulation. Now there is quite a lot of technical detail in here, so make sure you follow all the notes really carefully. The excretory system is made up of a number of different organs. These are the kidneys. This is the bladder. This is the ureter. And this is the urethra. The kidney is fed by obviously an artery. This is the renal artery. And blood is removed by the renal vein. Above the kidneys, you'll see this little yellow blob. That is the adrenal glands. So those are the adrenal glands. The the word ad means above in Latin, so renal being kidney, ad renal above the kidney gland. The excretory system is responsible for making urine and also water regulation. We call that osmoregulation. The basic structure of the kidney. Over here you've got the ureter. This is called the pelvis. This is your renal artery. You've got your renal vein. On the outside of the kidney you've got the cortex. On the inside of the kidney you've got the medulla. And this structure over here is called a pyramid. So the whole inside area is the medulla. That structure is called the pyramid. Now, in terms of why the kidney is structured this way, you've got something called nephrons inside of the cortex and the medulla of the kidney. The nephron runs this way. So you'll have your little Bowman's capsule there of your convoluted tubule, your nephron will reach down into the pyramid and back up, little convoluted tubule again, and into the ureter. So that would be your collecting duct. Now this is the proximal convoluted tubule right here in the beginning. This is your distal convoluted tubule. And down in the center here, you've got something called the loop of Henle. Then this is your collecting duct over there. The Bowman's capsule is on the end, but I'll show you an enlarged diagram of that. This is the nephron of the kidney. So remember, you've got your Bowman's capsule over there inside of the cortex of the kidney. You've got the medulla of the kidney there. The convoluted tubule, loop of Henle into the medulla and then your other convoluted tubule and your collecting duct. So here, this is the cortex, on this side of the dotted line the medulla is down here. And then you've got your different parts of your nephron. So right over here you've got a Bowman's capsule. It is a scientist's name, so it needs to be done with a capital. The Bowman's capsule contains the glomerulus. Now, the glomerulus is basically a cluster of blood vessels. Here you've got the renal artery bringing it in. You've got the renal vein exiting, and you'll notice in any pictures in your in your textbook or any pictures in the exams the renal artery is much wider than the renal vein the renal vein is narrower to create pressure inside the glomerulus to force things filtrate we call this ultrafiltration into the bowman's capsule Right From the Bowman's capsule, the substances that are forced out of the glomerulus by ultrafiltration move into the proximal convoluted tubule. Right? From the proximal convoluted tubule, these substances move down 
and up the loop of Henley. Is somebody's name, so it's spelt with a capital letter. The loop of Henley is there to absorb substances. Now, the longer the loop of Henley, the more water will be absorbed. So if you looked at loops of Henley in desert creatures, they are much longer than loops of Henley in creatures that live in, in areas with lots and lots of water. And then on the other side of the loop of Henley, you've got the distal convoluted tubule. If you're struggling to remember which is which, distal, in the distance, the distance away from the Bowman's capsule. So distal convoluted tubule. And then down, the last duct is called the collecting duct. And this feeds into the ureter eventually. Right, so the collecting duct, um, the collecting duct is used to regulate water absorption. You'll notice the hormone ADH affects the permeability. Of the collecting duct. Okay, a couple of other details that you need to know is that the majority of glucose and amino acids and other things are absorbed in the proximal convoluted tubule. The loop of Henle absorbs water, and ADH, more water is absorbed by the ADH in the collecting duct. Now, as you get to the distal convoluted tubule, the things left inside of the substance that becomes urine is urea, salts, and water. Now, it's all urea, some salts, and some water is left. You won't find any glucose unless the person is diabetic. You won't find any amino acids in urine. And all cells like red blood cells, white blood cells, large proteins, etc. stay in the glomerulus. They can't get filtered into the Bowman's capsule because they're just too big. So the stuff filtered by ultrafiltration into the Bowman's capsule, you've got glucose, you've got some amino acids, you'll have urea, salts and water. By the time that stuff gets to the loop of Henle, the glucose and the amino acids have been reabsorbed in the proximal convoluted tubule. The only thing carrying on is the water, the urea, and the salts. And then at the end of the tube, you've got the water, the urea, and the salts leaving in the urine. A water regulation is a combination between the brain picking things up and the kidney doing its action to reabsorb water. Water regulation is also known in the body as osmoregulation. And sometimes you come across that word in, in the exam as well. So the pituitary gland, just in the brain, um, will detect if there's too much or too little water in the blood. So if there's too much water in blood, or if there is too little water in blood, two different things happen. I'll start with the too much water in the blood. If there's too much water in the blood, think about it. You need to release a lot of water, which means your urine will end up being dilute. And then blood water level returns to normal. Okay, if there's too little water in the blood, your body's going to try and keep water so the urine is going to be concentrated. At the end, which means that the blood water level returns to normal. Now, how does that happen? Well, if there's too much water in the blood, the pituitary gland detects. And what it does is it releases... A little ADH. And ADH stands for anti 
diuretic hormone. Right? Releasing a little ADH means that the ADH travels in blood to the kidney. Because it's a hormone, so hormones method of travel is always in the blood. And the kidney is the target organ for ADH. ADH makes the collecting duct. Now look at what happened at the top. A little permeable. So it makes the collecting duct a little permeable, which then means water is not reabsorbed well which means urine is dilute, which means that blood water level returns to normal. So the urine will be very dilute because over here in the collecting duct, only a little ADH acts, so only a little bit of water is reabsorbed into the blood because there was too much water in the blood to start with. On the other side, with too little water in the blood, you have the pituitary gland detecting Again, the pituitary gland is there. The pituitary gland detects. It releases a lot of ADH. Into the blood. Because there's too little water in the blood. A lot of ADH goes into the blood. And it travels down to the kidney. And that's where the ADH makes the collecting duct very permeable to water. Which means lots lots of water is reabsorbed so a lot more water stays in the blood and the urine is concentrated and the water level returns to normal now a lot of the time if there's too little water in the blood it'll also the, the body will do other things like make you thirsty so that you add extra water to your blood so that your osmoregulation is completely in sync. This is another mechanism of homeostasis. The important things to remember here is antidiuretic hormone stands for, um, ADH stands for antidiuretic hormone. The more ADH, the more water is absorbed. So if there's a lot of ADH in the blood, a lot of water is reabsorbed from the collecting duct because the collecting duct is made very permeable. If there's a little bit of ADH in the blood, a little bit of water is reabsorbed because the collecting duct is a little bit permeable.